One in five Americans will suffer from clinical depression in their lifetime, and suicide is a leading cause of death in adult Americans. Until recently, the tools to fight this disease have not matched the extent of this huge problem. Joining me now is world-renowned neuropsychiatrist and neuroscientist, Dr. David Feifel. Dr. Feifel and his team at the UCSD Center for Advanced Treatments are pioneering and utilizing several cutting-edge treatments for psychiatric disorders. Thank you, Dr. Feifel, for joining us. Thank you you and your team are really helping out many, many people, changing their lives for the better. Tell us about the prevalence of depression here in the U.S. and worldwide. It, the prevalence is really shocking. I think a lot of people don't recognize uh, just how high the prevalence is. You had uh, mentioned that one in five Americans will suffer from clinical depression in their lifetime. In any given year, uh, about 9% uh, of Americans will have a depression. The World Health Organization, which is the uh, health arm of the United Nations, ranks clinical depression as the fourth leading cause of days of productive life loss and death. Mm -hmm. And they're projecting that by the year 2020, it's going to be number two, by, well, behind, only behind uh, cardiovascular disease. And for women, it'll be number one. Now, what's, what's uh, really, uh, I think, also shocking is that the rates are really increasing, that we're mm -hmm. seeing not only that the rates are high, but that they're increasing. The, the rates for American adults mm -hmm. have just about doubled over the past decade. And shockingly, in kids, the rate is uh, increasing by about 23% per year. That's unbelievable. Why do you think that is? Why is depression growing in numbers? That's a really great question. I don't think anyone has the mm -hmm. definitive answer for that. Um, there's a lot of research into why that's happening. I think part of the, the explanation is that the way our society is changing in mm -hmm. terms of uh, increased stress and uh, uh, lifestyle habits. And also, I think, you know, the, uh, the, the supportive structure of uh, traditional you know, the more traditional mm -hmm. uh, society of, uh, you know, uh, a nuclear family and an extended family, we, you know, mm -hmm. we don't see that as we have uh, more and more mobility. Okay, let's talk about the symptoms of depression and how debilitating it is for someone who is actually suffering from it. Because the people who haven't dealt with depression, they just don't know. Right. It is one of the things, I think, that in terms of medical conditions, it's uh, uh, probably the, the hardest thing for people who don't suffer from depression to recognize. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people with the people who suffer from depression um, can sometimes and uh, really look on the outside uh, normal, fully functioning, but on the inside they are you know completely devastated. They uh, they they find it hard to you know get out of bed in the mm -hmm. morning. Uh, everything seems bleak. Um, when it gets bad enough, they actually can't get out of bed. Mm -hmm. They see no hope. Everything is distorted by the depression. You know, the source is the brain, distorts their perception of, you know, uh, their future. Mm -hmm. One of the really uh, significant things that happens mm -hmm. in depression is that the reward centers in our brain that fire and allow us to feel pleasure and anticipate pleasure in the future mm -hmm shut down for people uh, with depression so that nothing really seems enjoyable. Mm. Things that they used to love doing before seem really flat and uninspiring. Would you say it's a disease much like cancers? You, someone can't help whether they get cancer or not and then you just have to treat the cancer like you would have to treat depression. Absolutely correct, yeah. Taylor, and, and I think I wish more and more people would recognize mm -hmm. that because we tend to think that people's uh, behavior and motivation is under their control, whereas, you know, uh, something that happens to their body mm -hmm. is not. But really, you need, to, uh, you need to, uh, to, to think of depression as a disease of, uh, of the organ uh, called the brain. Mm -hmm. And just like the kidney uh, or the liver or the heart mm -hmm. can malfunction because of a disease, so can the brain. And it is the seat of how we feel. Mm -hmm. And so um, if it's malfunctioning, there's not much people can do to, to correct it on their own. Let's talk about the treatments you have at the center and how you get the brain to start firing right and uh, give it a good tune-up and so it's running correctly right. and so people can go on to you know lead happier healthier lives. Right. Well one of the uh, uh, motivations for creating the the Center for Advanced Treatments that we've created at UC San Diego um, was the fact that we uh, until recently have not had the kind of treatment mm -hmm. tools to match this really significant 
uh, you know, medical burden of, mm -hmm. uh, of, of depression and anxiety, uh, which, by the way, often goes along with the depression. Uh, medications have been the mainstay mm -hmm. of treating depression for many decades, along with uh, talk therapy. Mm -hmm. Both can be helpful for a lot of people, but for a lot of people, they just don't cut it. Mm -hmm. And so I would see many patients sent to me by their psychiatrist because they've tried all the medications and they've tried the talk therapy and they've, there's really nothing they could do. And I realize that um, there, there needs to be a place that, um, that brings together uh, some of the really exciting, innovative things that are uh, being developed and are currently available in the field of psychiatry mm -hmm. to treat this disorder. One of those things is a technique called transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS for short. Mm -hmm. Um, TMS is really a paradigm shift in psychiatry. As I mentioned, for the past uh, 60 years or so, the idea is that depression is primarily a chemical imbalance mm -hmm. um, and that the medications target that chemical imbalance. But we realize that there's great limitations. TMS actually uh, targets the other function of the brain. In addition to being a, uh, a machine that uses chemicals, it is also a machine that relies on uh, electrical impulses. Mm -hmm. The brain cells themselves fire electrical impulses uh, that eventually release the chemicals. So interestingly, the chemicals are there to facilitate the electrical mm -hmm. firing. Now with depression, just like every other brain disease, uh, what happens is there are parts of the brain mm -hmm. where the firing starts to become perturbed. And TMS uses a very innovative approach of reactivating those areas of the brain that, are, uh, that have become shut down in mm -hmm. uh, depression with a, uh, a pulsed magnet. It is a technique where we place a uh, specially designed high strength magnet mm -hmm. over the areas of the skull, just above the areas of the brain that are underactive, and through a series of uh, pulsed uh, magnetic uh, stimuluses over time, we are hopefully able to kind of get those areas to start firing more. We create uh, molecular changes in the brain cells. And it's really a different way of treating depression that uh, really wasn't around 10 years ago. Yeah. So, uh, one, so, so TMS really is, is one of the focal points of the center um, uh, as well as other things that we have brought to bear mm -hmm. to bring to this uh, fight against depression. And you've had great success with it. How about the other treatment that you have, ketamine? Talk about that. Yeah, ketamine is, is, is a fascinating new treatment also for depression. This is a, uh, ketamine is a drug mm -hmm. that's been around and approved for use in humans uh, since the 60s as an anesthetic mm -hmm. and also as a, as a, in some cases as a, as a painkiller. But we never recognized until very recently that at lower doses mm -hmm. it also can produce dramatic effects on depression. Mm -hmm. So uh, several seminal studies found that when ketamine was infused to patients who had depression that had failed all the medications mm -hmm. and all the talk therapies, um, a large percentage of these patients had a complete resolution, resolution of their depression wow. within hours, wow. which, which is not something we see with almost any other medication or, or technique in the field uh, of psychiatry. So that was really revolutionary. One of the drawbacks uh, is that usually in, for any given ketamine uh, treatment, the benefits last uh, a duration of anywhere from a couple days to maybe mm -hmm. a couple weeks. So we are working on ways at the center to extend that mm -hmm. wonderful benefit. And ketamine and TMS are two of the tools that we use often in combination because we really believe that the, the people who come to us who have already tried and failed all mm -hmm. the standard things have a very, very virulent form of the disease that requires bringing to bear all the tools in conjunction mm -hmm. to, to get them better. It's really a formidable foe. We need to use everything. We have people who tell us in no uncertain terms that they would not lo no longer be on this earth were it not mm -hmm. for the help that they, they were able to get at our center. Um, again, uh, I wish um, we were able to do that 100%, mm -hmm. but I believe we're going to get mm -hmm. there. And uh, right now, we are having remarkable successes. And, uh, you know, we got to keep in mind that every year 35,000 mm -hmm. Americans take their lives, most of those as a result of depression. And, um, and so there's a huge need 
for better treatments and uh, centers like mm -hmm. the one at UCSD that, uh, that make available to patients all the latest cutting edge treatments. Well, people come from all over the world to see you and I see why. Thank you so much for joining us and thank you for you know, changing people's lives well, and thank saving you. them. If you want more information about Dr. David Feifel and his tremendous work and the exciting life-changing treatments they are doing at UCSD Center for Advanced Treatments, go to sandiegotms.com.